After many years of prominence, Toyota has replaced the Tarago in Australia with the more upmarket Grandvia. We start our review in a downpour in Sydney on our way to get six people to test if it has the comfort, performance and value for money to be a luxury people mover. Some friends and I are going for a trip not far out of Sydney, up into the highlands, particularly to the township of Barrel. Now, Barrel is best known in Australia as the childhood home of our great cricketer, Don Bradman. Six people, one car, what should we take? Well, there are a number of large SUVs that will fit at a pinch six or seven people, but it can be a pinch. The third row is typically quite cramped and not well suited for adults for long journeys and some aren't really suited for medium-sized children on short journeys. Now, a few years ago, you would have taken the Toyota Tarago, but their sales have faded. In fact, the overall winner in the sales market in people movers in Australia is by far the Kia Carnival. It's a good car too. It's practical. But Toyota, who will never compete on price against the Koreans, therefore goes for something that is more comfortable. I mean, they would use the word luxury. And so they replaced the Tarago with this, the Granvia. Granvia sounds like the name of a estate in England next to Downton Abbey. Now, it's a distinctive looking car, distinctive, and it is, as I say, aimed at luxury, well, certainly comfort. So, is it fit for purpose? Let's have a look. The good news is that the Granvia is on an all-new platform, but it is from the High Ace van, so driving dynamics might not have been the first priority. Toyota says it has bold styling with an imposing exterior. It's certainly big and has a front like an American freight locomotive with a few chrome garnishes, which would also suit the American market. The front features auto LED headlights, fog lights and daytime running lights. From the side, the 17-inch alloy wheels are noticeable, while the second half of the vehicle is very square, but it makes for great window views, even from the third row of seats. At the back, it has all the elegance of the high ace van, which is modelled on a flat-top haircut. Tight shopping parking spaces and narrow streets are not areas it easily fits into. With a height of 1.99 metres, some urban environments are out of reach. Big sliding doors on both sides are functional, and we had the upmarket VX model, so they were automatic, which I sense is a great addition. Manual ones would be heavy to handle if the non-automatic rear door is anything to go by. It was big and heavy, reachable only by tall people, and you needed two hands to get it shut. Putting aside its barn-like appearance, it is inside that the Grandvia really makes a statement. The point about a people mover, rather than an SUV, is that it provides comfort, or at least good room, for the second and especially the third row passengers. The Grandvia takes comfort a step further. All models come with six captain-style chairs, which have huge adjustment. The second row seats can move fore and aft with a range of 592 millimetres, which, among other things, makes the access to the third row of seats quite easy. The third row seats have a back and forth range of 624 millimetres. And not just for adults, the captain's chair have isofix anchorage for looking after the little ones. In the VX, the middle seats have electronic adjustable squabs and a powered ottoman function. Like the old combis, there is room to move around as you get ready to travel. You can get the Grandvia with a fourth row of seats, but you would have to compromise the space for the others in order to provide any room. We adults didn't try. Having eight seats also reduces the rear cargo space to something a small hatchback would be embarrassed about. 
Just before you start a trip, make sure you have moved the second row of seats back and locked into place. Just sliding them back does not secure them and so they move around with great momentum and crashing sounds. With the Granvia, sitting in the front seats is comfortable but almost has a sense of relegation about it. It has good steering and seat adjustment but a manual handbrake is a bit old fashioned. In front of your driver are simple dials with a 4.2 inch information screen in between which can be a plethora of information. The main screen choice has speed limit, lane indicator, outside temperature, clock distance to empty, instantaneous fuel consumption, graphic average fuel consumption and trip distance. In the centre there is a reasonable but not huge 7 inch touchscreen display, AM FM digital radio and a CD player. A bit of a blast from the past. Bluetooth connectivity, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto compatibility, 6 speakers or 12 for the upmarket VX. Satellite navigation has live traffic input. The VX has quilted leather accentuated upholstery and rear sunshade blinds. Just one engine, a 2.8 litre turbo diesel, 130 kilowatts and 450 newton metres that drives the rear wheels. Not a lot of power, it's got the same kilowatts and only 18% more torque than a Nissan diesel X-Trail, a mid-size SUV of course. And the Granvia weighs 2,660 kilograms. But then again, your passengers are unlikely to want wild acceleration. Only a six-speed automatic gearbox. Its fuel consumption is rated at 8 litres per 100, and there's not a big difference between urban and rural driving. We average 10 litres per 100 with everyone on board. There's enough power for driving around the city and for comfortable touring on good standard roads. I would, however, be especially cautious before I pulled out onto the other side of the road to overtake a long truck up a hill, but that is unlikely to be its environment. It has hydraulic rather than electric steering, so there's more feel through the steering wheel. It is derived from the high ace, so not surprisingly, its handling is more van than sedan. I wouldn't take it to a track day in the hope of getting first prize. But for a 5.3 metre long vehicle, it has a great turning circle, thanks to rear wheel drive, rated at 12 metres and feeling like you could do a U-turn in your driveway. It's big on the street, but remarkably manoeuvrable, even in tight spots like a drive through the diesel engine is noisy on the outside but well suppressed on the inside and the road noise is very good on quality motorways but a little less so on secondary highways. You can hear the expansion joints but everyone found conversation easy even when telling the driver what to do from row 3. The lane keep assist seems to slow the car rather than redirect the vehicle. It surprised all who drove it. But for most of the journey, I sat in the third row. I was very happy. I had my computer to make a few notes, and there are six rear USB ports for passengers, so we could all keep our phones charged. On the way home, even Dean, our resident artist, who is six foot three inches, tried out the third row. It was the first time such a position was a pleasant surprise. Plenty of safety features, nearly all of them come as standard across the two models. It has pre-collision safety with daytime and nighttime pedestrian and daytime cyclist detection. High-speed active cruise control, auto high beam, front, rear and parking sensors, vehicle stability, traction control and trailer sway control. It is only rated to tow 1500 kilograms, so large caravans are not on the menu. It has hill start assist and nine airbags. For a big vehicle, being aware of things around you is especially critical. The Granvia has blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert and a reversing camera. For safety, the VX model adds a panoramic view monitor and auto dimming digital rear view mirror. 
It's dearer than the more popular people movers, but is well placed with luxury brands. The entry level six seater is just on $63,000 at a couple of grand for eight seats. The luxury version is the same price of six or eight seats at just on $75,000. To all prices, you must add on-road costs. The Toyota Tourago was first launched in Australia in 1983 and had four major generation models. Driving a white Tourago was the epitome of functionality and could make your neighbours think that you were getting the courtesy bus home from the local club. In launching the Granvia, Toyota said we had to deliver a markedly better vehicle. The Granvia is clearly better than the Tarago in its focus on luxury. But the seating narrows the use. The great thing about the Kia Carnival, the biggest selling people mover in Australia, is how easy it is to take out some or most of the seats, creating a much more versatile vehicle. But the Granvia is aimed at hospitality, corporate and upmarket family buyers. It's likely to be seen as a five-star hotel, shuttle, corporate transport for senior executives or just a large luxury family wagon. There is no doubt that holidaymakers, business executives or the children would feel comfortable and even special in this vehicle. The only thing is that if you are trying to impress people, I would get them to approach the vehicle from the front rather than the back. So, in conclusion, the Granvia VX, the good points? Well, it's very comfortable for three rows of passengers, with ease of entry and exit, and it has a convivial environment, including low ambient noise, in the cabin. Could do better? Moderate engine power for the size of the vehicle, fourth row of seats is a compromise to everything else, and it lacks some versatility for things other than moving people.